with the city in the heart of the church. And uh, remember, our vision is to build a multi-ethnic congregation in the city of Dybal, Texas, of apostolic believers as a testimony to the transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to preach this morning by the help of the Lord in the book of John, the 12th chapter. This is not what I had planned, but I want to look at this. Tonight, don't forget our fellowship dinner is after service, and I will be preaching the fourth in the series of relational Pentecostal masking, the mask that Pentecostals wear. And uh, we will that will be our final in that series. And then uh, soon we will be teaching on the family. And uh, so pray for me in, in that. These are so important. We see so much in our world and in the apostolic church that God wants to, God wants to correct and help. And uh, you could turn me down just a little bit, bro, and I'd appreciate that. All right, John, the 12th chapter, starting with the first verse, we'll move through the 8th verse, and then you can be seated. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, and they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him, then took Mary a pound of ointment, of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? And, he's, and he said that, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag. That's neat about Jesus, isn't it? Jesus knew he was a thief and made him treasurer. It says a lot about the Lord, doesn't it? Let me move. And this said he, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein, then said Jesus, let her alone. Leave her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor, always you have with you, but me, you have not always. Father, I ask you for the next few minutes that you would help me to articulate. God, I'm going to depend on you today, God, because this, I finally got your mind, Lord, and I want to deliver what you've given me. With power and authority and anointing, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Interestingly to me that the, I want to preach on the fragrance of worship. Everybody say fragrance. The fragrance of worship. And so the action of Mary here in John 12 verses 1 through 8 points toward the death and burial of Jesus Christ. Yet her act is certainly, it was an act of worship. It was an act of worship anointing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Her act was a timeless act. It was a timeless act that illustrates true devotion. We've talked about her before. True devotion she demonstrates to the Lord. Her act was extravagant, wasteful, wasteful and needless to those who are not spiritually minded. That's, that, that's what worship does. It seems needful, it seems wasteful, it seems extravagant to those who are not spiritually minded. When we come in here together every week, we have an opportunity to host the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. You see, Mary rightly recognized that the words extravagant, wasteful, and needless are irrelevant where devotion is concerned. When you really love something, you, well, everybody will know it, right? I mean, if you love pizza, if you love pizza, 
Everybody knows you love pizza. If you love somebody, everybody knows it. Uh, my wife, we've been married for 33 years, and I love her today. And uh, I love her today more than I did then. Sure, 33 years. 33 years. Sister, Sister Hook, how long y'all been married? 41 years. Brother, yeah, Brother Winston, how long? 55 in June. Love. I was recently asked uh, to participate. It's not been released yet on a podcast on marriages. And we talked about three types of love on there. And the first type of love was love as a feeling. How many is familiar with that type? Sure. The second type of love we talked about was love as an action. And then there's love as commitment and devotion. Thank you, Lord. And that's what we talked about. So uh, it'll be released soon, and uh, that's just a side note, and you'll be able to uh, listen to that soon. Amen. And so she rightly understood, Mary did, that devotion and worship called for something that is extravagant, something that might seem wasteful, something that might seem needless to individuals. She was going to do this regardless of who was around. Well, and the fragrance, so she broke this alabaster box and the fragrance, the, uh, the fragrance was a product of the oil that was in the box. And the breaking of the alabaster box actually activated. When she broke it, it activated the smell. And the smell permeated the place where they were sitting. I wonder if we realize that our worship or lack thereof releases a fragrance. I hope you hear me this morning. It releases a fragrance that will fill this house. What kind of smell are we releasing? Huh? Uh, worship, worship releases something. True devotion and worship releases a fragrance. Go, go, go with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 through 16. Listen to what it says. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest our savor, our smell, our savor. Of his knowledge by us in every place. What kind of smell are we releasing? Uh, listen to what it says now. Uh, not Savior, Savor. Uh, smell the scent of his knowledge by us in every place. For, for we are unto God a sweet savor. A sweet smell of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one were a smell of death unto death. And to the other, the smell of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Thank you, Lord. The body of Christ here, Paul says, both individually and collectively releases or activates a spiritual fragrance when we worship. This, this is a metaphor that illustrates something that is real and the, the fact that both sinner and saints can smell the fragrance of worship. Well, that's why some sinners reject our testimonies. Because they look at our life, right? And so what kind of smell are we releasing? Are we releasing the fragrance that is a sweet savor unto the Lord or a stink? When I was in Germany, I learned something. I learned they didn't wear deodorant. <laughs> I, I learned that. And you know what? Sometimes you could sure tell it. I mean, you could smell it from here to the window back there, the mirror. 
I mean, it, it there with, and you wanted to run, you wanted to run the aisles, but not in the spirit. You wanted to run the aisles of the store to get away, because they released a the smell. Listen, the same thing happens in worship. True worship releases, according to the, what I just read, there is a fragrance that is released. Sinners smell it. Listen, if you're, if you're living a life of genuine worship, and I'm not talking about just in these four walls, but genuine worship in your house, this is why some people feel the conviction power of God in your life and your testimony listen you, you don't have to beat somebody down you can share the love of God hallelujah and be a living witness and exude a fragrance that is pleasing to the Lord God almighty hallelujah what kind of fragrance are we releasing this morning listen if we allow the spirit of the Lord the oil of the spirit to pour out over this body Oh, hallelujah. The sweet, that's what we've had all week long. The sweet, it drew, it drew some. Some were just temporarily here, like in the back. They come running in. But that will draw. It will draw. You get the, you get the smell, <laughs> the good smell of worship, the fragrance that's released. And guess what? It will draw individuals. I, that, hey, that's just not what I, that's just not dug one and one. That's the Bible. That, that's the Bible. The Bible reveals when true worship exists, it releases a fragrance that has a drawing power by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And if we let the oil of the fragrance of the Spirit release in this place, there will be a sweet smell that fills the house. Hallelujah. And it will be evident to everyone that's around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, I want Dabal to be recognized. I want people to say, boy, them folks smell good up there. They, 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 they smell good. They smell good. It's the fragrance of the Spirit of God that activated by true worship. That's what made the difference between the pre-Pentecost believers and post-Pentecost believers. Think about it. Prior to the outpouring of the Spirit, the individuals were timid. They were frightened. They even denied and they forsook the Lord. In fact, they returned to their previous occupations. Remember Peter said, I go a fishing. And the rest of them followed. Subsequent to Pentecost, they were joyful, they were bold, and they proclaimed the gospel message with power and authority. And friend, they could walk down the street, hallelujah, and they would exude such a fragrance that individuals took note, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, think about it. Think about it. The, that, the, that which made the difference was the fragrance that's produced by God's Spirit but activated by our worship. It's His fragrance. I hope you get this. It's His fragrance, but it's activated by and through true worship. And the results then were astounding and the results today will be astounding. What was the results then? Well, Acts 2 and through, 1 through 4. When the Holy Ghost moved in that place and people were filled with the Holy Ghost, 3,000 got a whiff. I received something last night from, uh, I responded, I don't know if you saw it yet, Kevin. I responded, he sent me a thing that he did on the demographics of, of Die Ball. And it was amazing to me that e even if there is a, a larger spread, a larger spread of ethnic groups, one thing I noticed was no matter what you do, the fact remains is that there's one church in Die Ball, and if there is only 5,000 people, we, that means about 1%. Less than 1% are here. 
we have got to release a fragrance out there. Amen. We've got to release our fragrance out there. Those that we come in contact with when we go to Jack in the Box. Amen. When we go to Jack in the Box. Instead of just ordering your food, you got to say, hey, how was your day today? It doesn't hurt to exude a little fragrance. But listen, if you've not worshipped all day long, please don't tell them where you go to church. But if you have a worship, hallelujah, some God, God will make an opportunity every day, every day, every day. You and I have an opportunity to be a witness, to be a witness. Listen. Activated through true worship, the results was astounding then. 3,000 got a whiff on the day of Pentecost. In Acts 3, 1 through 9, when they saw the lame man at the gate, beautiful, when he was jumping up and down, they got a whiff of God's spirit and the result was 5,000 more. A whole population of diabol added to the church in one day in one day in one day 5,000 say that could never happen today and that's why it's not you I, listen I serve the same God today and I, ser I said I serve the same God today Listen, and I'll say it again, I'll say it loud, I'll say it to whoever's watching, the assembly of God has not got it on us. Amen. The Baptists have not got it on us. The Methodists don't have it on us. The Baptists don't have it on us. The Church of Christ doesn't have it on us. The, the Church of the Latter-day Saints doesn't have it on us. Listen, this is the apostolic church and we need to be true worshipers. Hallelujah. And exuding a fragrance that fills the house. My God, hallelujah. Uh, in Acts chapter 5 uh, you know that story a couple hypocrite members come in and God dealt with them well, and one day that'll happen the Bible says the hypocrites hope will perish but folks got a whiff of the fragrance of the spirit genuinely produced by him but activated in true worship I mean think about it Peter walked down they laid they laid folks on the street so just the shadow of Peter would pass over them. God help us. God help us. Exuding. Exuding. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. Sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish, Paul says. To the one we're a savor of death unto death and to the other a savor of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things what about it I could go on and listen the points made the fragrance of the spirit within us individually and collectively makes the difference when my daughters were younger they would often try on perfumes and they would have me smell them and uh, I'll be honest with you you know <laughs> some of them smelled great and frankly, other snake, uh, other snake, and uh, uh, genuine worship always, always produces a sweet smell. But admittedly, Paul's telling us it's received differently by different people. Some react to the fragrance as death. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Now, they, they used to say, hey, that's all you ignorant people do that. Well, frankly, I'm not ignorant. But they'll say, oh, ain't no need for all that. Oh, you don't have to, you don't have to sling snot. You don't, you don't have to, you don't, that, that's a little extravagant. All right, Judas. Oh, I don't believe you have to do all that, all that, all that crying out to the Lord. Better watch it. Better watch it. Better watch it. I'm talking about fragrance. Some react to the fragrance as death because they're spiritually dead. That's what Paul says to those that are perishing. 
Those that are perishing, true worship looks extravagant. True worship looks extreme. True worship looks needless. It's unnecessary. Don't have to do all that. That's to them that are perishing. But to us, but to us, hallelujah, but to us that have the Spirit of God, hallelujah. Hey, listen, if I drop my dignity, hallelujah to God, if I look like a fool, I'm going to look like a fool for Jesus Christ, hallelujah. God's done so much for me. Hallelujah. God's done so much for me. God's, hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever been through a tragedy. If you've been through a tragedy, listen, when Jonathan laid on the, he laid on the cold slab when he was born, I watched them open up my wife. I was in there. Uh, when they opened her up and took out Jonathan and he was not responsive and they laid him on a, on a waist scale naked and not breathing. So do you really think that I said, Lord, I worship you. I honor you. No. I begin to pray. And when they called that life flight in Chattanooga and said, turn around, turn around, the kid is all right. My sister was out in the halls speaking with other tongues, speaking with other tongues and praising the Lord. I was praising the Lord right there in the, uh, in the operating room. Listen, it called, something like that called, called for a little extravagant worship. It called for something that, that some might feel is, listen, you're, hallelujah, no telling what God would do if you'll drop your dignified self and you'll say, Lord, I cry out to you. Oh God, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I've been wrong. I want you to give me, I want you to Make me right, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, fragrance. Talk about the fragrance of worship. Listen, some people react as, as if it's dead because the enemy seeks to blind people. To blind people from the truth. Huh? He tells them there's no need to allow the Spirit to permeate their life, and if they do, death will result. And they believe true worship's undignified, and true worship causes a death to fun. That's what they believe. I, I have fun. A death to relationships, and ultimately a death to self. Let me tell you something. True worship, true worship will restore relationships. True, true worship will make you who you're supposed to be. If you, when you start worshiping the Lord, He'll mold you and make you into what you need to be. It's, it, it's a death to self only in the sense that you're renouncing selfishness. And you're... Oh, I wish I could preach on that. I don't, I don't have time. We live in such a selfish society. We live in a selfish society. Everything revolves around me. My rights. My rights. Nonsense. Listen, if you would do one thing, and I would do one thing, and that is concentrate on the needs of somebody else, get out of our pity party, and begin to worship the Lord, God would do something for you. <laughs> hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But those who are being saved, listen, I'm still there, to the other, a savor of life unto life. To those who are being saved, they understand the fragrance. This is fragrance of life and true freedom and liberty are given to those who truly worship. Truly worship. They understand true worship is necessary in order to experience the life wrought through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it what? More, have what? Life and have it what? More. Does your face show more abundance? Does your face show that you believe that you have life 
more abundantly. Well, complaining, griping, belly aching. Come on. Our face. Come on, alert the face. Beep, 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 beep. Alert the face. We have life more. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got life more abundantly. You've got abundant life. Isn't that great? I mean, you, that, that, that doesn't mean everything might, hey, listen, everything may not be rosy, but you still have abundant life. Everything, listen, things could be crumbling all around, but you've got abundant life. Hallelujah. You, you've got abundant life. Life that, well, praise God. It's eternal life, it's participation in the life of God Almighty. God, help us live abundantly. Abundant life. Listen, you can have abundant life and be poor. How much did we get a month in our first church? Do you remember? I do. I do because I had to work five jobs. We... Tell, tell me, what did we make a month? What do you think we made a, a month at my first church? Now, this was not in the 40s. This is in 90, 1990. What, 91. What did we make a month? Huh? Well, well that would have been nice. Um, so um, on a monthly basis, we made 100 bucks. 100 bucks. But we had abundant life. Had abundant life. Our first set of twins were born. And we had abundant life. Uh, light, because we had the Holy Ghost. Amen. Had the Holy Ghost. When, when, I, thought, when, I, got, when I got a church that we did 15,000 that year, uh, I, we thought we was in heaven. Now, they were dead folk. But, uh, but sure, 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 they were. And, and I say that because... We had a lot on the books that weren't there. <laughs> um, we, we, we got there and they said we had a church of 30 and there was like five. And first day I saw the Sunday school superintendent mowing the grass, wearing shorts. And my wife said, well, who's that mowing the grass? I said, that's Sunday school superintendent. <laughs> uh, we'll have to fix that. But God helped us. We had abundant life. We, we had abundant life. Life on the inside. And guess what? And he stayed with us. He stayed with us. Sure. Listen, you, if, you'll, if you'll exude a fragrance of life. Listen, I don't have to be a harsh teacher. I don't have to be a harsh preacher. God will do everything. God will teach. Amen. And if I just preach the word, that's all God told me to do is preach the word. Hallelujah. If I'll preach the word and you will live the word, God will fill this place. That is a promise from heaven. Hallelujah. Ah, true worship. Abundant life. He's a restorer of relationships and a recreation of oneself. Hmm. Uh, I, I ask you plainly this morning, do we want to exude a fragrance of life? Do we really want to? Then we've got to realize like Mary that until our alabaster box is broken, until we release worship, until we renounce our selfishness, until we say, oh God, I want you. I want you. Oh, when we, until our alabaster box is broken through worship, the fragrance will not be released. I'm challenging us this morning to worship him in spirit and in truth to worship him he's deserving if God never did one more thing for you if he never did one more thing for me my God's done everything I, I don't know if you believe that or not but my God's done everything if I never received another blessing If I, if I never received another blessing, never, God's still worthy of my praise because he's done everything. My, my God sacrificed everything. He come down. He, 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 he come down. 
he, he, came, he became something that he was not. A man in order to save me. What more? What, 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 what more? What more could he do? What, but listen, David, uh, uh, this is another message, but David, when he was offered for free the implements of worship, he was offered them for free, the place to worship God, the place to build an altar. What did David say? David said, God forbid, I will not give to the Lord that which cost me nothing. I, it, that is a principle that God himself honored. What would it take for God to make a world? Nothing. He spoke and it was done. What, what, what would it take for God to make humanity? Nothing. Took dust and breathed them into the dust. Ah, oh, but our salvation. God did it. God, that which cost me nothing, David said. I won't do that. I won't, you don't give it to me. I'm gonna worship. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay for this. I, I'm, and he did that because God Himself did that. What more could God do? God did something. He, he looked for a man, the Bible says, and he couldn't find a man. And so you know what our God did? Our God said, <laughs> I'm going to become, I'm going to become one of them so that I can save. So the great creator becomes a creature in order to salvage and restore his creation. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. What more could God do for us? And, and, and we bellyache about our problems. God forgive us. We need to worship him in the good times and in the bad times, in the times of plenty and in the times of lack. We need to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords because he is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, musicians. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Come on, do we want to exude the fragrance of life? Then we got to realize, like Mary, our alabaster brocks must be broken through worship where the fragrance will not be released without worrying about what somebody else will say. Uh, I realize the effect will vary. Some may be indignant about your worship. Some may say all that stuff is not necessary. But listen, I promise you there will be those that... Hallelujah are amazed as the fragrance of life fills you and fills this house. Fills this house. Hallelujah. Now, I don't claim to be the greatest preacher, nor am I the greatest singer. But you know what? I want to be a sincere worshiper that exudes the fragrance of life unto life. And sometimes, Brother Grant, that means I've got to be a little different. Swallow my pride. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Come on, let's stand. Hallelujah. What, what, what do we have? Just appreciate it. Do you want to experience God's presence and power? Come on, break the box today. I want you to break the box. Break your box. Perhaps you never experienced true life. But you can do it today. I think most of us in here have. Oh, let's 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 pray. Come on, let's find somebody, pray with them. Let's break the box together. Oh, God, help us to be unified. Hallelujah. Help us to be unified, oh, God.
Help us to be true worshipers. What kind of what kind of smell are we releasing? Are we willing? Are we willing? We're going to release a fragrance of life unto life. I live to worship. I'm going to challenge you, Leo. Break your box. Break your box. Break your box. You that are watching, break your box. Oh God. Break your box. And you just worship. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you just worship him, hallelujah. If you'll worship him, God will honor you. God will honor you with his presence. Oh God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you'll just lay it aside for just a moment and concentrate on him. Oh Jesus. Yes, Jesus. He cut up a holy day. Who is the noise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me to release it. To be with you. Unto life. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Let me help. Help me to realize who you are. Hallelujah. You're the king of my life. Hallelujah. What more could you have done? Oh, God, help me, oh, God, not to do anything for that which costs me nothing. Oh, God, I want to bear the cost. I want to bear the cost, oh, God. I want to worship you, Lord, in spirit, oh, God, and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you. Thank you, 
you, Lord Jesus. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many want to worship Him? How many want to let off a fragrance that exudes life? Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands one more time and let's thank Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah. Appreciate you, Jesus. Well, praise God. Why am I? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 